Hallelujah. Praise God. Hello, dear friends. Good morning to you. Good morning, everyone. We give thanks to the Lord for His good. His mercy endures forever. Thank God for this new day. We thank God for the sunshine. We thank God for the rest that we had at night. We give thanks to the Lord in all things. He is worthy to be praised and glorified. The Lord, the Creator, the Creator of heaven and earth, who has made you and me, dear friends, we humble ourselves before Him and we are filled with gratitude for all that He has done for us. We thank God for the very breath that we breathe. But dear friends, God loves us. Very true, but He is a God of justice. And God loves us so much that He gives us a warning all the time. And today I want to bring to you, before you, the warning that we hear. Mind the gap. Mind the gap, we are told, as we travel on the tube. We often hear the warning, mind the gap. Mind the gap, this is a warning, dear friends, announced to take care of the gap that exists between the train and the platform. Mind the gap, watch before you take a step, Mind the gap, watch, you might fall and harm yourself. Mind the gap, we are told all the time as we travel on the tube, on the train. You might fall and break your leg or you might harm yourself, get electrocuted and die. It's a very considerate warning that the transport for London give to us as we travel on the tube. It's a very useful warning. Mind the gap. The warning is announced before you get off the train. A very timely warning. This warning helps us to take care of our life. It's a good warning and we should be thankful for the uh, London transport to give us the warning as we get off the train and on the train to mind the gap. Now if humans are so careful to warn us so that we may not suffer, suffer loss, how much more God? God in his mercy and kindness constantly keeps warning us, ask us to be careful about the eternal matters eternal gap. There is an eternal gap, dear friends, between God and us. There is an eternal gap and we got to mind this gap. God so loves us that he has given us the whole book, the Bible, with thousands of warnings. And the Lord God in his mercy and kindness, if you read the Bible, keeps on warning us, keeps on warning us. And dear friends, the further we go away from God, this gap widens. This gap widens, dear friend. We go further and further away from Him. And throughout the Bible, they are repeated over and over again so that we remember, so that we are warned, and so that we save our life. Isn't that a wonderful warning, dear friends? God is so merciful that He warns us about the gap that exists between us and God. Repeating the warning is good. In the tube, the warning, mind the gap, is repeated over and over again. We humans are very forgetful. God, therefore, repeats the warnings over and over again so that we remember then not fall in the gap called hell. 
There is a gap, dear friend, between God and us. And that gap, the Bible calls it hellfire. Hellfire. And God constantly warns us to remember the gap that exists between our soul and God. The gap is hell. The Bible calls it hellfire. And the further we go from God, the wider the gap becomes. The more we ignore the warnings about the gap of our soul, the closer we come to fall into that gap, the lake of fire. And finally, if we have not climbed onto the bridge that God has provided and erected for you and me over the gap, we, we dear friends, will lose our life in the gap of hellfire. Dear friends, mind the gap, the gap between God and you. Mind that gap. It's a pit of everlasting fires. It's a pit of everlasting sorrow and misery. Mind the gap between you and God, dear friends. Mind the gap. This gap is real. Just like the gap between the train and the platform. It takes away your life. The, the gap between God and man, between you and God, oh dear friends, it is real and you got to mind it. Now in the case of the train and the platform, there is no bridge. There is no bridge that one can step over to the platform. And this is because most of us can manage to step over, isn't it? We can manage, we are capable of stepping over onto the platform. But in the case of the gap between God and man, oh dear friend, there is no way that anyone can take a leap across to God. But by their own ability, there is no way, dear friends, by our philosophies, by our human will, by our strength, by religion that we can step over the gap of hell into the presence of God. We cannot do that, dear friends. It is impossible. Dear friends, on our journey of spiritual life, we are disabled. We travel in a life, in a life, in a disabled carriage. Yes, what has caused our disability that we cannot step on the other side of God. What has caused our disability that we cannot go across by our own strength to meet God? What has caused this spiritual disability that we cannot leap over this gap of hellfire? It is sin. It is rebellion. Yes, hating God command and has caused us this spiritual disability and we cannot dear friend by our own self reach on the other side of the gap into the hands of our creator sin has separated us from god and his heavenly benefits no amount of pilgrimages no amount of yoga no amount of of religious habits no amount of offering garlands and flowers and candles. Nothing, dear friends, can make us cross that gap which is there, which has separated us from God and us. And we cause this spiritual disability to ourselves by becoming God's enemies. Yes, we cause this spiritual disability to ourselves by bringing God, by rejecting God, hating God, and casting Him aside. We take great pride in believing that we are atheists. We take great pride in believing that we are not sinners. But as a result of that, dear friends, we are widening this gap between God and us. God, dear friends, He still loves us. And he has made a bridge, dear friends, a bridge for us to cross on the other side of the gap. God has connected the gap between us and him. Yes, how has he done this? 
How did he do this? Oh, how has the Lord God closed the gap, built a bridge over the gap of hellfire? God sent his only begotten son. His name is Jesus Christ. The son of God became man. He lived a perfect life. He obeyed all the commands that God has put, dear friends, for you and me. The Son of God fully pleased God in all things. He kept all the laws, dear friends. He became fully obedient to the Father. We are rebels. We are rebels, dear friends. But Jesus, the Son of God, submitted himself fully to God his Father. Jesus, the Son of God, came to offer a perfect, perfect sacrifice for your sins and my sins. Dear friend, Jesus, the Son of God, please God on our behalf. We are supposed to fall in that gap, that gap called hell, dear friends. But God in his justice and mercy has provided for you and me a bridge a bridge to reach over to God the Father. We all deserve, dear friends, to suffer and die forever because of our sin. But Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to take our suffering. He substituted himself, dear friends. He took death upon himself. Yes, he became a substitute on our behalf. While we were God's enemies, God loved us. He died for us. Christ died for us. While we rejected God, Christ Jesus sacrificed himself on our behalf. This is God's love, dear friends. It is called the agape love. What is an agape love, dear friends? Agape love only belongs to God. And that is the unconditional love. Agape love is an unconditional love of God. While we do not deserve to be loved, yet he loves us. Yet he loves us, dear friends. While we were yet his enemies, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Jesus allowed his blood to be shed and allowed himself to be nailed on the cross. He allowed himself to be put to shame, dear friends, because of us. He allowed himself to die and to be buried in the ground, dear friends. He took our death upon himself. He died and buried, but death and grave could not keep him, could not bound him. He rose from the dead. The third day he rose from the dead triumphantly. He defeated sin, death and the grave. What a victorious God we have. There is no hope in any other but Christ Jesus alone. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, dear friends. What a gift God has given to you and me. Come, dear friends. Come to him. Come. Come to the cross at Calvary and be forgiven of your sins. This is a bridge that God has built for us so that we may cross over through Christ Jesus by putting our faith in him and be saved. Dear friends, the only way you can cross, you can cross the gap, jump and leap over the gap of hellfire is through the bridge that Jesus has built for all men. He is the bridge, dear friends. He is the only one that can connect us with God. And dear friend, be set free from this misery and hopelessness. Every sin can be forgiven by Christ Jesus. He is the only one that has the power and authority to forgive our sins. So come, dear friends, and ask for forgiveness from the Lord. The Bible says, if you reject and deny the Father and the Son, you are an antichrist. If you deny the Father and the Son, you are the antichrist. 
Isn't that a terrible thing, dear friends? To be blamed, to be accused, and to die as an antichrist. Again, the Bible says, if you say that if you have no sin, you deceive yourselves, and the truth is not in you. There are so many people who believe that they are not sinners, and yet they will not, they will uh, sin all the day long. All the day long, they are blinded. You and I, we are all sinners, dear friends. There is not one who has not sinned. But if you say that you have not sinned, then you make God a liar. You make God a liar, the Bible says. So, dear friend, be careful of the gap of your spiritual life. Don't keep falling in the pit of sin all the time. Don't blaspheme God all the time. Don't curse Him, dear friends. He is a just God. Escape from your sins. Run to the Lord Jesus Christ, your Savior. He loves you. He is willing to forgive you. It does not matter what sins you have committed, dear friends. He will take away your sins and He will give you the power to overcome sins. Yes, He will give you the Holy Spirit. And if you have been committing fornication and adultery, and if you have been robbing, and your life is destroyed by drunkenness and gambling and all kind of misery that you have brought upon yourself, God can give you the power to overcome sin, dear friends. He is the only one who can give you the joy and the power to get away from your misery. Praise God for Jesus Christ, dear friends. Praise God. Let us humble ourselves before it is too late. The time is up, dear friends. Jesus said, repent and believe in the gospel, for the kingdom of God is within you. You must enter into the kingdom of God before it is too late. All the other kingdoms, all the nations will be destroyed, but the nation of Christ Jesus, the kingdom of Christ Jesus, will remain forever and ever. That is why you must come, dear friends, repenting, humiliating yourself before the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you.